Thank you very much for your fantastic uh, spirit of enthusiasm. I can suddenly feel the heat. I think it's mostly not from the temperature, but it's from your enthusiasm. <laughs> so in any case, my name is Wing. Please just call me Wing. Because um, <coughs> Mr. Lee's, I will use that when I reach a certain age. But right now, I'm still young at heart. So let's please just call me Wing. Make me feel a little bit better. So in any case, um, I know that we have a slow of a late start. How much time do I actually have? I just want to budget. <laughs> Until we tell you to stop. <laughs> Until the security staff come, right? <laughs> Usually our Q&A ends at 9.30 to 10 o'clock. I see. Got it. Got it. So we got, we got a good time. So in any case, I want to use this as an opportunity to first say uh, Happy Chinese New Year. You have the tiger. And I want to, want to say thank you for your personal engagement. Uh, certainly, that's a degree of uh, engagement from this room uh, because all of you uh, in the business world, you all have a fairly hectic day and you still find the time here to come here and join us tonight. Uh, that shows a level of commitment and I really appreciate that and really encouraged to see that uh, happening right here amongst the young people in Malaysia. So I'd like to perhaps divide my time into three sections. The first section is to talk about who I am, why am I here? Uh, the second section is to talk about why, what do we do at YTL Communications? Uh, what's our mission? What's our objective? How do you go about accomplishing that? And number three is to talk about what that means to you. How do we help improve your life? How do you help improve the GDP of this country? And then open up for Q&A. That sounds like a game? Great. Yeah. Great. So I have a whiteboard here. The idea of having a whiteboard is that uh, I'm an engineer. So whiteboard is, is a good tool for engineers. Um, one of the things that, that we joke around is that uh, when, when I was back in the United States, we used to have lots of meetings. And people would count how long it would take for Wayne to walk up to the whiteboard <laughs> and start you know, drawing on the whiteboard. Uh, because that's just one thing that uh, you know, engineers like to do, right? We want to think, think out loud and use the whiteboard to chart our ideas. So the reason we use this whiteboard tonight is that I want to hear from you right now. If there's any specific things you want me to address, I propose to you there are three key areas. Certainly, you come here with a certain set of objectives and expectations. So is there anything that you want me to address tonight that you want to just call out? Can I hear from you? Anything? Everything. Sorry? Everything. Everything. <laughs> okay. Beyond everything, anything else? Uh, Would YTLE beat the rest of the competitors? Ah, how do we address competition? No, Got it. No, so, no, I, does this, this fit into our agenda? That's no problem. We can talk about that. Yes, sir? Is your company going to be a nationwide or only to the metropolitan? Great. We'll cover that. Sir? Uh, we'll let you know the turning point of your career. Turning point of my career. I think you should write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what else? Uh, future plans for YTL communication. Future plans, we'll cover that. Yes. When are you going to go listing? This way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a banker. <laughs> <laughs> the next session. <laughs> uh, yes, I understand uh, YTL is going into the 4G network solution, right? So how is it different from the previous, uh, current 3G? So Fair what enough. is the major difference? We'll cover that. Thanks. What else? Cisco, Cisco. 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 What about Cisco? <laughs> <laughs> sure, we'll come about Cisco. So in the back. Yeah, uh, how will uh, YMAX cover rural areas? How will YMAX cover rural areas? We'll cover that too. <laughs> yes. Uh, is YTL also going to expand 4G to foreign markets? I see. Oh. International aspirations. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, why YMAX not LTE? Ah. I love that question. <laughs> what else? <laughs> well, we have already got established telcos in this country. How do you handle competition? Competition. How do you deal with competition? Got it. Thanks. Next. Uh, expanding into the wide broadband market. Why? Why? Sure. How do we provide seamless connectivity? Right. No, I mean, like, uh, do you have any like efficiency going to the wide market? Why? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about that. Thanks. Next. Can you tell us about the one million dollar my prize? Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Contrary to this up there, hey. Uh, okay. Next. Uh, what about uh, anything else? We have any plug? Are you playing with like TM? TM? Yeah. What's our relationship with TM? Yes. With Arthur. <laughs> hey, seriously, with Arthur. Next. We're good for now? Yeah. Okay. 
Keep them coming. So that you hold me accountable, making sure I address this. So, let me tell you who I am and why am I here. So I'm actually born and raised in Hong Kong, in case you can tell from my accent. <laughs> so um, I was born, uh, I'm the uh, only child in my family, so I, I grew up quite uh, alone. And uh, I just attached with my mom because uh, she's my only parent. I lost my father when I was young. Uh, so my mother is, uh, has a small print shop business. So as a small print shop business owner, she would go see her clients all the time. So I would then just go with her and see her clients with her. And uh, one thing I noticed that was in the uh, uh, early 80s, I started seeing her clients having all these uh, so-called personal computers sitting uh, in the office, but mostly as a show-off point. And if they were to use it, it's mostly a fancy typewriter. And at that time, I was at home, because as you know, my mom, just like any good Chinese mom, won't let the con would not let the son out of the house. So I stay home and I told my mom that, well, you know, uh, I do want to learn about computer. So my mom uh, at least uh, took that uh, uh, concept to heart, thinking that I really want to learn computer. And bought me an Apple II, clone, of course. And the first thing I did, what I do, guess. I know, a little better than that. Uh, space alien, <laughs> uh, asteroid, yeah, that kind of stuff. So my mom quickly realized that that's not, uh, she knows enough that that's not right. <laughs> right, so she said, son, I mean, let's be serious. I mean, if you keep playing games, then uh, I'm going to have to take this thing away. So I said, okay, I'm going to start learning. So I start teaching myself uh, basic programming language. That was kind of fun. And then I uh, start learning CPM. That was kind of fun. So that was before school, we started teaching computer science in my, uh, in my high school. So I know enough. Right from my amateurish type understanding, that the computer can do a lot more than word processing or fancy typewriter or just as a fancy looking uh, tabletop uh, showcase. So I knew that you know there has to be a better way to use this machine to improve people's lives. That was uh, I was uh, form four in Hong Kong, and that's when I start getting the idea that well maybe one of these days I may study computer science. So. Fast forward, I was uh, in Form 6 in Hong Kong. And uh, at that time, um, I was thinking, well, I'd rather start planning on college. And at that time, my mom was telling me that, well, you know, I want to give you the best education. So, son, what do you want to study? But my first and foremost hobby at that time was photography. So my first answer was, I I'm a photography. And my mom said, well, nice try, but uh, if you want to study photography, <laughs> just any good Chinese mom, um, you know, please, by all means, but uh, you have to pay for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to study something else, uh, we, should, we can talk about it. So I said, well, that's my, my second choice would be computer science. So I said, well, what computer science? That sounds like a plan. So uh, amongst the, uh, all the top colleges uh, around the world at the time, uh, certainly America has a lead when it comes to computer science education. So there it was, uh, going to America. So my, my, my selection of colleges in America was quite straightforward. Since I don't have any friends or relatives in America, I just went through this uh, college guide and picked the top uh, colleges in America that offer computer science curriculum. So at that time, I was going for the college guide and uh, there were a number of good schools, right? Uh, so uh, University of Texas and Austin, as you know, I went there. Obviously, it was one of them, it was one of the top five programs. Uh, also, UC Berkeley uh, and a few other schools. So basically, I picked schools simply based on do I have any classmates? <laughs> going to school there, because that's my only social network, right? So I applied for, for Brown, uh, applied for UC Berkeley, University of Texas, uh, University of Minnesota, and University of Washington. So these are all decent schools in the top 10 computer science uh, curriculum in the United States. So <coughs> fortunately, I got accepted to all the schools. So that became an interesting dilemma. So what I do? How did I pick uh, one of the five? So very simple, I checked the weather. <laughs> <laughs> so quickly, Brown was gone, uh, University of Minnesota was gone, University of Washington, you know uh, Seattle, do you know about Seattle? Beautiful, scenic place, but it's always drizzling. Suicide rate is the highest in the country actually, so I didn't check that, <laughs> but I checked the weather, it rains a lot now, I'm not going. So that leaves uh, UC Berkeley and University of Texas, and someone was telling me this big, this, uh, this big one is coming to San Francisco, earthquake. I thought, well, you know, it may not be a good idea to go to school in a place that uh, you might just, you know, drop into the ocean. 